Again, my name is Phil. Um, I live here in, we just went over this. Anyways, I live in Marin County. Uh, so my talk this morning, I, I've changed a little bit, is it, 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 flipping the funnel. And so if you're familiar with, this is how I was trained. I worked for Youth for Christ for the first six years of a funnel diagram of how you move students through a funnel and then, but I want to throw out a different idea when it comes to this. But at first, I want to set up this whole idea of post-Christian. Um, I feel like we, we, we've all experienced this in some way, but it, I think it's important maybe for all of us to maybe get some good language around this. And I would love your input when we're done as to what you've seen in your context that may be post-Christian. So I hit this. This doesn't count for my time. There you go. Um, fl fl flipping the funnel. Um, people have this growing, in a larger amount of people, growing of the church is irrelevant and something that's over there. Even within my students, they have no church history. They have no idea of faith or God. There's a church building that people go to, but they have no context for it. Large majority of the students, I just mentioned, that, have no church history. Their beliefs are pluralistic, meaning they'll take a little bit from Christianity, or they may take a little bit from Buddhism, those who are spiritually aware. But rarely do they land on just one area of faith. The, the dominating belief is hedonistic, meaning that their students and adults are living a life of trying to self-fulfillment and whatever they can do to help themselves feel better, whether that be working out in the gym or whether that be, you know, we just recently, if you've been keeping up with the Bat Kid um, thing that happened in San Francisco, something that like, just happened yesterday. So this kid who is five years old, had leukemia, won it. One of his make-a-wish was turn San Francisco into Gotham City, which I think it is already. But um, so, and so they did this and they had 12,000 volunteers for this one kid. This idea of, um, and it probably is a driven of, I just want to feel good about myself if I can help someone else. And which goes into, the people just want to do good things. I think that, think that people want to do right, even though they may not know what that means or what that may look like. Very individualistic and independent. <coughs> Students, and I'm sure this is, we all run into this, are overscheduled, and it's a parent-driven schedule. I'm running into this more and more, where the parents are deciding when they take the PSATs, the, from when they wake up to when they go to bed, it's very driven, and it's very driven around this mantra. You have to get the best grades, get into the best college, and make the most money. And so everything they do is around the college app, at least for my students in high school. And so it has to, well, whatever they do has to go towards that college application. You know, now they're like filling out 10, 15, 50 college apps. It's getting insane. Most everything a student does for that college app Schools, there's, there's a growing sense of schools requiring service hours in order, order to graduate. Schools are closed to religious groups, campus life, coming in for the purpose of, you know, trying to build your club or, or, or to build um, your youth group. And for many post-Christians, they don't see the church as offering anything they need or that they want. And so, well, I'm going to skip this. You guys know of the train and this is kind of how it's been outlined. So if you start from the right, from the left, with modernity, the facts, and then it moves in, that how, that's how they define their faith, and that's how they interpret the experience. Post-modernity being more about the experience that they have, that's how they build their faith, and then facts. My hypothesis is that post-Christian is more about feelings and experiences. I, I've had some conversations of people go, well, I feel like it should be like this. Well, they've had an experience with it or not, and that feeling and then dictates the faith. In fact, sometimes are kind of, well, maybe. So how do you reach a culture like this? So this is the funnel diagram. And if you guys are familiar with this, or am I kind of out in the field at all, nodding some heads? Okay. So there's this large group of students, lost students up here, and we begin to arrange our programs around how to reach these students. We have events and outreaches or contacting youth groups, clubs, small groups, discipleship groups, then once they're believers, we send them on mission trips and do service type of things. Maybe we, we decide on a cause. And then we have these student leadership. And so as a result, you know, as the funnel gets smaller, you know, obviously fewer and fewer students move through it. But there are times where students can pop into any one of these. And then it's our hope that then our student leaders go back to within their classmates and they start bringing them and be witnesses and bring them through this funnel. This still, for the most part, I, th I think works today. What I've experienced is that the events and outreaches for, for where I'm at, don't really work. We just recently had this big fall festival. We spent money on it on our church uh, to invite our community in. We had a few people come, but then like last year, the net gain of those who really stick around is zero. So it's like, 
no one's really going to the church for these events. I, I remember when I worked for Youth for Christ in Indiana, we would do this uh, tailgate party, and we'd have like you know, 50, 60 kids that would come, and they ended up coming to our clubs, and they would actually start moving through this. And so what we've experimented with and have had a certain amount of success is flipping this. Of course, all of this is, is relational. Oh, that's where it stops. So, um, <laughs> it's all right. So, if you, if you can, let me go back to the funnel. I had a few more slides here, and somehow, it's all right, Ben, I forgive you. So, what we have done, and again, love input, shortfalls that you see in this, we've taken the mission, experience, and cause, and put it at the top. These students are looking for something good, they're looking for college apps, they're looking for something to differentiate themselves, and so a service trip or a mission trip for us going to an orphanage, they can put on their college apps. We have not turned away a non-believing student to go on our trip. Of course, our purpose of the trip is twofold. One is to reach these students, and two is more construction work and not direct ministry. Although we have done, asked students to read a Bible story um, to these children at the orphanage or this no-cost daycare that we go to. And so as a result, these mission trips and services and a cause, what, is the, what are we really about? Are we about our self-existence? Or are we going to help students come along a path of service and we've taken up justice, modern day slavery, and we've seen a growth of students and parents going, yeah, you need to go on these trips. And so as a result, then we have, we've also moved student leadership up to kind of the second piece in this. And so this morning, my wife is leading our student leadership academy where folks on modern day slavery, but the majority of our students who are going within this post-Christian context are non-believing students. And they're looking for now, even though their starting point may be, I need service hours, or I need to feel good about myself, or this is for my college app, it's a starting point. And so this is, as far as the flipping the um, funnel idea of what we are running with right now. And you get a lot of this from just looking at Jesus' life. He invited his disciples to go along with him, and rarely did he either, rarely did he teach, or just teach, but he also showed compassion and healed and taught. He spent his time with the poor. You have, you know, it was a ministry of compassion and teaching. You had um, Matthew 22, 36 through 40 of the greatest commandment of love God. And equal to it is loving others. When I, when I, in the past, when I've looked at my ministry model, it's all been about loving God and, oh, hey, you know, and love your neighbor as yourself. But to really begin to model this. And the conversations that, that, that we've had come out of this is like, so how do you take those trips back home? And how do you show compassion to your friend, those that are struggling at school, and how do you reach out to them? And in the process, we, this also starts from a belief that we were created to serve others. That's how God designed us. And so if we can help students along that process, I think they, they even have an innate ability of, I need to do something good, even if it's about feeling better about myself. Partnering that with, that's how God created you. And let's see what God has to say about that.